Steelhead are one of the most popular species found in the Great Lakes. Not only do these acrobatic fish put on a show when hooked, they can be found in all five of the Great Lakes. That's right, even Lake Erie, a body of water best known as a walleye fishery, offers up some amazing steelhead action. If you know when and where to look, Jake and Mark Romanak head to the central basin of Lake Erie, not far from Cleveland, Ohio, to search for steelhead that roam the offshore waters. up. Let me get that old bait clicker off there. Good morning. It's a little bumpy on the big pond today. It hasn't taken very long to get hooked up here though. What do we got here? What is shaking out there? I'm gonna bring him up on this inside here and on your port side, Jakers. That's the right thing we're looking for, Dad. Nice. nice. All right. That's a good way to start a morning right there. <laughs> hold on, got a fish that won't hold still. Lake Erie Chrome, there we go. Now that is a pretty good start to my morning. Oh, let's get this guy on some ice, keep him nice. Fish on a 10 color here, Dad. Ah, that's what mine was that just fired here that didn't hook up. Looks like you got a little better luck than me. You know, one of the things we're dealing with, we're seeing right off the bat this morning, is warm water. And, uh, and that's okay, because one thing about Lake Erie is that you have a lot of different fish to catch. We're gonna catch walleyes today, we're gonna catch steelhead today, but we're primarily looking for steelhead. And what you wanna find with the steelheads, you're looking for a little bit colder water. They like that colder water. You know, if you can find that high 50s, low 60 degree water down at depth. We're gonna search around. The nice thing about steelhead fishing, it was trolling fast, covering a lot of water. And uh, eventually we'll find a little pocket of cold water that's got a pile of steelhead in it. Oh, a little slow on the net here, Jakers. There we go. Nice. Yes. That's not a bad fish right there. That's a good eater size. We're gonna keep this one for a fish sandwich, Dad. <laughs> That's the nice thing about Lake Erie is there's not very many places you can go and catch steelhead and walleyes doing exactly the same thing. 
Hopefully we've got your pile of steelhead too, but it's a pretty cool mixed bag fishery. While I'm resetting this lead core and talk just a little bit about it, you know, you don't have to have walleye lead core and salmon lead core. Literally, lead core is lead core in my opinion. If you set up quality lead core rigs, um, you're going to be able to use them for a multitude of species. And what I chose here is I chose 27 pound test lead core. And uh, that's a good overall size that fishes a decent depth. It's strong enough to support salmon, uh, yet obviously you can see it's working very well for walleyes. Um, on the terminal end, I got a 25 foot leader of 20 pound test fluorocarbon. Again, works very well for trout and salmon and for walleye. And when I let all this lead core out at the back end, I'm gonna have a backing material and I chose monofilament. And again, I went with 20 pound test monofilament as my backer material. So for a lead core rig like this, if you're gonna fish it with boards, you need at least 200 yards of backer, however much lead you feel you need to get to the depth you're trying to fish and you're in business. Almost got the lead out. You can start to see my monofilament backer coming up there. That monofilament backer's coming out now, and that's what I'm gonna hook the planer board on. And as long as we're there, I might as well go ahead and just do that as well. Just gonna grab my line, put my planer board on real quick here. Now all I have to do is lay this in the water and let it go out to the side. It's really that simple. Inline boards fish beautifully with lead core. Special considerations provided by Bill Lewis Lures. Special considerations are provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. Oh, now this is, whoa! Pretty sure that's on a walleye. Hold on here, Bubba. We are not done with you yet. Holy smokes. That was pretty exciting. I'm gonna make sure that drag is a little lighter here. There we go. There he is. I gotta look at him. He's a cromer. Woo! Man, it is so exciting. You know, people think of Lake Erie, they always think of walleye and, and maybe smallmouth and perch. They rarely think of steelhead. And uh it's a shame because they're actually stocking more steelhead in Lake Erie than they're stocking in Lake Michigan. Think about that for a second. I mean, everybody thinks you gotta go to Lake Michigan or Lake Ontario to get steelhead. It's simply not the case. It is simply not the case. You can get them in Lake Erie. Mother Erie has chrome. He came up and showed us, did a little leap, gave us a real good look at him, and then he went right back down to the depths. Before I even got to the downrigger, he'd already tripped the line from the downrigger ball and ran out 20 or 30 feet of line. And then when I got the rod in my hand, he ran out another 20 or 30 feet of line. I see you here, Dad. I'm gonna grab the net for you here. Look at him there, Jake. What a, what a beautiful fish. What a beautiful fish. I'm gonna try to keep him on this side of the boat for you. Like that, man. Are we ready? Go for it. Go tight. Oh, man, that's a big that steelhead. That is a stud. That is a big steelhead. Whew. Look at that. Silver, silver, silver. You've got to love that. The sunshine in that fish, my word. I love it. I love every inch of it. So we've caught a pile of fish on downriggers today. It's been a great way of getting our lures down to depth. It's pretty hard to beat a downrigger because if we're fishing straight below the boat and we're fishing anywhere in that 50 to 55 feet of water, so it's the least amount of line to get us down to that depth. It's super efficient. But one of the things we have to team up with our downrigger is a probe system, something like the fish hawk. And the reason that's so important is I'm actually looking for temperature down at depth. Now I'm watching it very closely throughout the day because what you'll see is these little cold pockets of water. And what I mean by that is we'll find 70, 75 degree water down there at depth, and all of a sudden we'll hit a small pocket of water that's in that 60 degree range, and that's where those steelhead like to be. So I'm constantly watching the probe all day long, paying attention to those little things. Now one of the things is, is that steelhead aren't as temperature sensitive as some of the other salmonids out there, but it's still important to try that, find that cooler water. They like to lay in that cooler water, they like to feed in that cooler water. So anywhere in that 60 degree range, if you can find that, you're gonna find steelhead. And the fish hawk allows us to do just that. You know, it's not a lot of surprise this morning that our riggers are firing, and uh, riggers are so efficient at fishing at depth. There's just nothing better. And uh, you've got to get down there 40 to 50 feet. There's other ways you can get down there, but it's really hard to beat the efficiency of a downrigger. 
And so it's not a surprise um, that we're getting some bites on these downriggers. The thing we want to keep in mind is that if you don't have downriggers, you are going to handicap yourself. This is a silverfish, Jakers. Oh, is it? It is a silverfish. Well, let me get this tipped over and I'll grab you in that. Okay. He was a smaller fish, so I thought it was going to be a walleye. Let's bring him right up here for you. It's a pretty good-sized fish, Dad. Oh, it's he fooled thought. me. He fooled me. I think he hit that 70-degree water. <laughs> no, I'm not having it. I don't want none not of that. It. Why don't you grab him out of there and hold him up, Jake? That's a, a good-looking chrome. So just thick, Dad. You know, a healthy fish. That's not a giant steelhead by any stretch of the imagination, but just a very, very healthy fish. And that's what you're seeing out here on Lake Erie. There's a lot of food for these fish out here, so they grow fast. And that is a beautiful chrome steelhead right there. Well, both of our, uh, the first couple of steelhead have come on a spoon. No surprise there. Uh, that's a mini streak uh, made by Wolverine Tackle. This medium-sized spoon like this is perfect for the steelhead because it does a real good job of imitating the forage they're targeting, uh, gizzard shad, and also an awful lot of small smelt in here. So that spoon size is just about perfect. And I like a little orange. There's a lot of colors to the work. The other thing that's going on here that's a little different, something you may never have seen before, is up here there's a tractor that I've got in line and that's called a Big Al Fish Flash. It's made by Yakima Bait Company and uh, essentially what that's doing is adding a little more flash and because these fish are deep, light penetration is not great down there, we want to get as much flash and attraction as we can. So the fish flash brings them into the rig and of course the spoon closes the deal. So I've got about a six foot lead from the fish flash to my spoon. I'm running my spoon back about 30 feet, putting it on the downrigger ball and then running it down to temperature. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, when it comes to the fishing scent for walleyes, there's really three flavors that we use over and over and over again. And of course, we use a lot of Procure Super Gel, and it comes in a lot of different formulas. And in many cases, I think maybe that might confuse people. If you're looking for a simple solution, there's really three formulas that we feel like we can't live without. Number one would be gizzard shad. Gizzard shad is a very popular forage species for walleyes in all of the Great Lakes bodies of water. The other one we use all the time is emerald shiners, and emerald shiners are also very popular in the Great Lakes waters, uh, reservoirs, even rivers, places like the Detroit River have a lot of emerald shiners. So we use an awful lot of emerald shiners as well. And the third scent that we use is one's probably gonna surprise you a little bit, nightcrawler. Now don't get me wrong, I know there's no walleyes out there swimming around eating nightcrawlers. It's not a natural forage, but we do a lot of nightcrawler fishing with spinner rigs, particularly in the spring and summertime. The thing about a nightcrawler is it's got a really nice earthy odor that attracts fish. But after a short period of time in the water, that earthy odor washes away. So we'll use the nightcrawler formula to recharge that and get that scent going again. So if you're looking for three scents you just can't live without if you're a walleye guy, you're gonna want gizzard shed, you're gonna want emerald shiner, and you gotta have nightcrawler. That'll get it done for you day in and day out. Hey Dad, you wanna grab the net? This is a pretty good walleye here. Got him right on the surface coming in now, so I pretty much own this fish at this point. Ooh, pulling pretty good. There we go. Not there bad. Go. Not a bad walleye. That's one of the things about summertime trolling for walleyes out here. I don't think anyone will ever claim that a walleye fights hard on a 10 color of leg core, but it is a great way to target walleyes out here in this deep water. We're talking about 75, 76 degree surface temp. This fish came 50, 55 feet down. So by the time he got to the surface, he didn't have much spunk left to him, but that is a really, really good walleye. The Phantom X2 OS that we're in today is a boat that's literally made for trolling. And I thought we should talk a little bit about the best way to set up a boat so that all your rods are in a position that makes sense for efficient trolling. And we'll start right here with this downrigger. Downriggers are always going to be the furthest lines back, so you want your downriggers on the corner. That's a good place for them. And as I move just a little bit forward, forward here, this is going to be my diver rod here. Diver rod has to be in front of the downrigger in order to be able to make sure that the lines don't cross. Then what about planer board lines. Well planer board lines go up here, we've got them 
on the uh, on the rocket launcher style holders up here so we can fish as many as we need up here, two, three, whatever the case may be. And as we look back at the back of the boat, it's all wide open so we can move around here. Got a nice sonar unit here so at the back of the boat we're looking at the information we need from sonar. We don't have to constantly look up to the, to the helm to do that. So we got sonar here, come around to our other rigger, and of course our fish hawk is right here as well. So everything that we need to be effective as trollers is right back here at the back of the boat. I don't got to go to the front of the boat, I can stay back here. Even tackle, when you look at the box that's back here, that's where we store our tackle. Everything is at the back of the boat. Makes us super efficient trollers. Being efficient puts more fish in the boat for you. Jake had just been messing with the rigger over here. He set it in the cycle mode. And I don't know if you're familiar with what that does, but it lifts and drops the downrigger ball. And in doing so, it triggers strikes. And look at this steelhead go crazy. Please stay hooked up here, buddy. This guy is going nuts. He's jumping and going crazy. Oh man. So obviously that cycling mode is what's really helped to trigger this strike. We've had a little bit of a dry spell here and this has really helped. Well, just another thing to add to your bag of tricks when you're downrigger fishing. And, uh, and not every downrigger of course has that cycling feature. Come on Bubba, hold on here. And this guy is hot. He did not, he did not like the feel of that steel. Beautiful fish. Oh, I'm going to switch you spots and come up in the car. Wow, is that a gorgeous fish. Don't get any prettier than that one. Oh, oh man, I'll take it. This particular Silver Street, I'm not exactly sure what that color is. Jake might know, but that has been a solid color today. It's caught us a lot of steelhead. And the colors on those fish are just insane. Emerald green, just absolutely gorgeous fish. I don't get enough of this, man. You can't catch too many steel. No, no, absolutely not. And on downriggers, that is so much fun. When you see that rigger go, it's whoever can get to that rod first, man. It's a lot of fun. It's not often that I'm faster on my feet than you are. You definitely are. beat me that time. I think I got boxed out on that fish. It's called a moving pick, Jake. <laughs> Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics and Daiwa Corporation. Here, here, here. Woo! Man, it is so much fun running to a rigger when it pops like that. I'm still trying to pull tight on him, Dad. He's coming up, I think. He's going to jump. He is going to come to the boat extremely green is what he's going to do. You got the net ready, He's there already, huh? Not a huge one. Woo! Boy, yeah. you sure ripped that rigger, though, didn't you? Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, that's a nice steelhead right there. You know, one of the keys to fighting these steelhead is you're going to lose fish. I mean, that's all that steelhead fishing is, is if you land 50% of your bites, you're having a really good day of fishing. But the key to it is to keep tension on these fish. That fish literally ripped that rigger, and I was reeling as fast as I possibly could just to catch up to that fish. And if I wouldn't have done that, that fish would have got slack and he came off. The second we netted that fish, he came off in the net. So an inch of slack and these fish come off. So you got to reel fast, you got to stay tight on them. And you'll land fish, but don't get discouraged if you lose them. It's all a part of steelhead fishing. So what I've been doing is I'm setting my optimum TS downriggers up to go through cycle mode, which is a great option right now. It's the middle of the day, the bite's gotten a little bit slower, which is very common. And so what the cycle mode does is lifts the downrigger ball up, whatever the desired depth. In this case, I have it set five feet. So it brings the downrigger ball up five feet, a couple seconds, and then it drops it back down five feet. And we're going through and we're marking a lot of fish, but they're just simply not biting. Now, since I've gone through this cycle mode, what you're doing is you're pulling that spoon away from the fish that are tracking it, that are trailing it behind the boat. And a lot of times you can kind of entice those fish to bite that might not necessarily bite. They might follow it for a while, get bored, and then swim away. But as soon as it starts to come up and starts to pull away from that fish, that fish thinks it's getting away and you can get those reactionary bites from those fish. So the cycle mode works really well on the Optimum TS to catch these fish middle of the day when the bite starts to get a little bit tougher. It's pretty hard beating catching fish on downriggers, isn't it? Oh, you'll love that. When it comes tight on that fish, it don't get much better. Here he comes. Oh man, that's a big fish, Jake. Nice. Should have got the big net for him. That's a big <laughs> fish. Now that is a Lake Erie steelhead right there. That is so cool. You can just tell that we hit a pocket of cold water when you caught that fish, because you can feel him and he's cold. And, and a lot of what we've been dealing with today is a lot of warm water. And we're looking for that colder water. It seems to be where the steelhead like to hang out. There's a little bit cooler water. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not looking for ice cold water. You'll never find it out here in this part of Lake Erie this time of year. 
But if you can find that 60, 62 degree water, that's where these steelhead are gonna hang out. They don't necessarily wanna be in that bath water here in the summertime. And this fish is cold. You can tell he was laying near bottom in that cold water. One of the things that the cycling unit on the cannons is, is that the rod tips are going up and down. So sometimes you'll, uh, you'll miss those subtle taps in the rod tip that we typically catch otherwise. And uh, whoa, he's a jumper. He's a jumper. <laughs> Go for it, buddy, go for it. Well, all of a sudden, that rod went down and stayed down, and I knew uh, that was the deal. Almost here, Jake. I'll grab the net for you here. He is all over the place, isn't he? He sure is. <laughs> These fish are doing everything in the world to get off. So, he's here, Jake. After all, right. all that, keep him coming. There nice, we, go. we got him, Dad. Good fish. This is the spoon that caught him, and literally the spoon came out two seconds after Jake scooped him. So, fish was in the diver, fish was jumping, he was all over the place. He wanted to get away, but not today. <laughs> that is a gorgeous fish right there. I don't think you could duplicate those colors anywhere else but in nature. Man, that iridescence, that green, pearlescent color, and it don't get any better than that. Hey, my name is Mark Romanak, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fishing 4-in-1. If you get a chance, check us out on Facebook. If you want to see more content, you can also check out our new newsletter, absolutely free, designed to help you catch more fish. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, Bill Lewis Lures, and Jay's Sporting Goods. You're in, on your port side, Jakers. That's the right thing we're looking for, Dad. Nice. nice. All right. That's a good way to start a morning right there. <laughs>